Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar introducing the new source version five. My name's Trudy Green. I'm the Partnerships and Communications Manager here at eWater, and I'm going to moderate today's session. We're joined by Dr. Robert Carr, our Chief Executive Officer, Jeff Davis, Head of our Software Development Team, Ashish Day, Head of our Sales Team, and Mukta Sukota, our urban hydrologist. Uh, we're going to start with Robert this morning and then Jeff's going to run through some of the changes from source. Mukta will demonstrate what the capabilities of the new um, urban developer program and Ashish will round up with some of our new packages. Um, just a couple of questions. Uh, Housekeeping, you're automatically on mute in this program. If you'd like to ask a question through, throughout, that's totally okay, but you'll need to type that in and you'll notice there's a question box um, on the panel and we're also able to communicate with you directly or we can share that answer across everyone. So let me hand over to Robert. Okay, thanks Trudy. Just waiting for the screen to come up. Okay. Yeah. Let me get that presentation ready for you, Robert. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Trudy. Um, all right, welcome everybody to a pre-peak um, at Source version 5 and a little bit of uh, Music X, uh, both these uh, the um, the update to Source um, will be out late June, and Music X, the first release, uh, will be um, most likely uh, early next month. So the focus on these uh, releases is uh, a big step towards urban integration. Uh, urban um, has not been a strong um, area of development through the uh, latter part of the CRC and the the early days of eWater after the CRC, but the last couple of years we have been putting a lot of effort, um, including, uh, as you know, the Music X release. And today we want to talk about um, the integration of some of the uh, urban demand into Source. So, next slide, Trudy. So, the ultimate configuration we want to get to is where the um, urban demand um, is connected to the um, urban uh, water course supply and the river supply. So Source, Music X, and Urban Developer um, as a plugin talking to all three. There are issues yet to be resolved or yet to be um, uh, developed with relating to adaptive time steps and how the three uh, tools will talk to each other. But now that music has migrated into Music X, we have the three uh, codes all in the same code base as source. This allows us now to build towards a fully integrated urban suite, which will allow us to connect all the um, uh, parts of the urban water cycle together. Okay, next click Trudy. So, whoops. Um, so the oh, we're going too fast. Okay, the first part of the talk is uh, will be by Jeff Davis talking about the um, new features in Source version five, and then Mukta will follow with the uh, discussion of the Urban Demand plugin. So notice the the old Urban Developer um, no longer exists as a standalone product and parts of it become an urban demand plugin which will talk with both source and with music so the first part will be concentrating on the source urban demand plugin component and the second part will be about music x and how we have some rough connection with uh, uh, with source um, not yet fully integrated and not, not yet time step integrated so these are the parts we have yet to go all right, next slide, Trudy. Uh, 
Okay, so the program is uh, introduction by myself, which is basically finished. Um, Jeff Davis will talk about the new features in source version five, uh, which have occurred over the last 12 months. Uh, and then Mukta will uh, demonstrate the new urban developer plugin for source and the linkages with MusicX. Um, followed by Ashish, which will sort of discuss uh, the licensing um, and some of the offers we have on the software products um, going forward, and then the Q&A moderated by Trudy. Uh, we expect to get through these uh, presentations in uh, uh, 40 minutes, maybe a little bit more than that, to really allow plenty of time for the questions. So thank you and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Robert. So Jeff Davis, you now have the power. So can um, the screen come up okay? Think so. So I thought I'd start by showing some features of the geographic view. So um, from zooming, if you hold down the control key, you can zoom in and out with your scroll wheel. Um, and if you've got a touch screen, you can also zoom in and out by pinching on a touch screen. Uh, you can now also combine subcatchments after you've built the model. So selecting a number of catchments and combining them. You can select nodes. So from a specific node, you can multi-select or upstream, downstream or downstream, including tributaries. This works well with the multi-deactivate feature. So you can deactivate this and all upstream or this or downstream and tributaries. So if you're just working in a particular area, um, you can deactivate most of the network and get your execution times really, really fast. So um, more in geographic, in the calibration tool, you can now um, not just calibrate flow, but you can also calibrate to constituents. So in here, you can select any recorder to calibrate to. So you can calibrate to the loads or the concentration. Um, in the future, we'll make it so we'll be able to calibrate um, any element of the model, but at the moment you can calibrate the rain for runoff, the constituent, constituent generation or filtering, and you can also calibrate links. just in here and when you are calibrating you now calibrate to a data source and within data sources um, you now once something is selected um, you need to right click and select and lock a usage um, to stop people accidentally clicking on something and um, changing the selection. Uh, also within data sources, um, you can now, when you have multiple columns in your data source, you can now match data items either by name or by their position. So if you have a tool that generates um, a large number of files, you can choose to reload on run with a relative path and you can find the matching data by either name or position. Uh, we have up improved the analysis window. So under tools, analysis windows, map. Um, and in here, you can select between the different runs you've done for this scenario. You can select a statistic and you can subtract other data. So you can, you can choose to do constituents 
and you can subtract the results of a different run and do things like don't divide by area. Uh, we've made a number of improvements in the results manager. So now when you complete a run, um, you also get a large amount of metadata about the run. So the project, the version of source, um, the simulation metadata, and you also get information about external files. So for instance, if they were reload on run, and if the file was existed or not. Uh, we've improved custom charts. So now whenever you create a custom chart by selecting multiple parameters, they now appear under temporary and then you need to move them into the uh, saved section for them to be persisted when you load and save. So I'll open up a resource assessment example. Um, within resource assessment, um, we've improved the usability of this tool a bit. Uh, so for instance, within the allocation table, we freeze the columns to the left and you can order these as you, as you wish. So when you have large numbers of accounts, this can be handy. You can choose to always lock important Important accounts. Uh, we've also implemented a way for you to build in custom errors. So if we look at this custom logs, so for this function that I've called storage error, um, if the result is zero, you'll get a fatal error and the run will stop running. Or you can set if the function returns a two, you'll just get an error, but continue to run. Or at five, you'll get a log of a warning within your log reporter. So this lets you build in custom warnings um, and custom validation for your model. We've been doing a lot of work in the operations mode as well. So, We've rebuilt the back of the operations mode. So now your recorders are independent from what you've got viewing in operations. So in this instance, this is the today line, the gray line, and the yellow is the travel time. So it takes one day to go from this inflow down to this inflow and the travel time goes along. Uh, you can customize fonts and colors. So for the historic period, if you've overridden any data um, for manually editing data, and you can have different colors and fonts for the forecast period, or if you've overridden it. Uh, we've built new tools for plugin developers to be able to remove plugins from project files much easier. And for plugin developers, we're also moving towards um, Microsoft's .NET Core framework. Um, and I think that's it for me. Thank you guys. And please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you, Jeff. Um, if there's, well, there's a love the new features. So I will take that as a comment. Um, perhaps think about your questions and we'll get to them at the end. And now I will let Mukta give a demonstration of some of the new possibilities. Thank you, Trudy. So, can you see my screen now? 
Yes. So my, I'm going to demonstrate on source five's capability in terms of uh, urban water modeling. For that, source five is going to offer you mainly two plugins. One is urban developer. So urban developer will help for modeling alternative water supply system. And next one will be music X, which is for designing strategies to manage stormwater quantity and quality. So now I'll take you to this screen itself. If you can see here in this screen, we do have river system modeling source, which is getting water from various sub catchments and also at various supply points it is supplying water to different water users especially in terms of uh, urban water demand molding and so on what is happening in the past was we used to model it lumpy based on overall uh, rent for rent of molding only but not considering the urban molding side which is very different also another important part is nowadays first thing is water usage pattern has been changed a lot also because of that now very less water so local water supplies are being used in those areas in addition to that efficient appliances are considered to be applied in so many households and these all things to actually need to be taken into consideration when we think about what water demand is required at this particular point and this urban developer plugin actually helps in that so how we can design this particular area is first of all what we can see is if you see here i can decide okay this particular area it might have some detached houses and again some of them may have renovated tanks and some of may not have any renovated tanks also they might have apartments or semi-detached houses maybe some of them again have gray water tanks and so on so you can now go and build the various templates using urban developer because so you can just like click here and then create your scenario for this particular example i have created already created three scenarios so i'm going to show you one scenario here in our urban developer so this particular scenario has got renovator tank as well so this is behavioral water use so if you see this particular node you can see here i can decide i can i have various water induces and also i can decide what sort of efficient showers or toilets I can use and then how am I going to supply that particular type of water in this case I have supplied for sour only potable water supply and then also I have I can divide it into whether that goes to black water or gray water after reuse and if you see the toilet I'm using rainwater tank as a first priority and then potable water as second priority similarly you can also do the same thing for outdoor irrigation you may provide data source for outdoor irrigation or functionator or monthly pattern so you have various options to do so and also you have now options to supply this demand with various options based on what you have also another thing what we can do here is if you go here in all urban developer options you can now supply the rainfall evaporation data as you can see here so for if you want to obviously do rainwater harvesting then you really need all those data and in another thing you can do is you can actually put all the information of this appliances as well so for example for sour in this particular case i have taken up to three star you can also add new if you want or you can change this particular way how it behaves as well based on your database so you can do it for all type of in uses and once you do that you can now run your 
model. So you can configure here when you want to, how you want to model it for which year, and then you can choose it. So for again, another thing is for running the model, you can whether it's just or on combination configuration or urban configuration, how that behaves differently is if you run with urban combination configuration, it won't run only for one type. If you see here, in this particular case, we decided zero star. So it won't only run for this particular case, it will run for all the cases. And then we can actually take that results to our source model and then uh, run later on. I'll show you that later on. Also, for this roof sizing, and you can all, again edit here based on your overall information. Similarly, for renovated tank design, you can design it based on the requirement. And also, this all the different variety of nodes are made here and run. Then now I can go to my river system and then tell this urban demand node, okay, these are my controls. So you can go to this demand models and then add urban behavioral demand. And then within this configuration now, you can choose the scenario results. So I'm choosing this, for example, and then this ROM, it will show, and then I can add, okay, what I need is actually now after doing all of those things, what will be the main supply volume required from the centralized system? So I can do that here. And once done, you can also decide how many type of houses. For that one again, you can actually provide by data source and function editor. So that is also possible here. So you can change it based on your requirement. In addition to that, if you do have actually GIS file for those all the areas, you can actually bring that data directly here, which will say, okay, this particular area have this many apartments, this many renovated tank, houses with renovated tanks, and this many separate houses without renovated tanks. You can actually import that data as well if you do have those sort of data. So this is how actually this demand model works and this helps especially in terms of like you don't you are not supplying water based on what you think okay this area is this much in based on only in uses but now what you are doing is you know what is exact water requirement here once you do the modeling urban demand modeling using our plugins so that is one advantage here now let's move towards another part which is music x you can see here this particular river system getting inflows from various sub catchments and especially this sub catchment here is getting outflow from town c and now i'm going to actually create scenario here using music x for town c so you can see here, this is music X scenario. So I'm now creating music X scenario here. And these are the notes available. So first thing I need is source note, which is catchment or sub catchment properties. So I can put whatever is my requirement. So I can decide for rainfall runoff generation. Also, I can give all the water quality parameters and so on. And then do okay. Now for this particular sub subcatchment, I'm thinking this oh, whole water goes to wetland. So I'm providing one wetland here. And then for wetland also, I can actually change the properties here. So I can design wetland based on my requirement. Also, I can actually use some of the water from wetland for irrigation in park and so on. 
we do have advanced parameter for designing those wetlands. Also, if I do have custom storage to start stock for the wetland, I can apply that as well. So based on your design criteria, now you can actually design wetland for that particular town. And finally, this is going to that quick C, which is receiving node, and I'm putting it here. So now this is my model in very simple model in music for that particular node. Next thing I need to do is climate configuration. So I, I do have one data here. I'm simply bringing that here. And then, okay, then I can now run this model. So after running this, also I have to save that flow as well. So I'm doing that now and running it. So you can see here, I do have flow here for this particular node. Now, what I can do next is I can now go to my river system again. And this, at this particular node, actually, I can ask it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring for that particular node inflow from my scenario data source. So. So this is the flow I do have for that particular scenario once I run in music. So now this particular point is getting outflow from my music model. And then I can run this model based on my requirements. So as you can see here, what in overall this is doing is this integration of music x and urban developer actually doing two things one is it allows viewing urban area as sub catchment of a larger catchment as you can see here and also it allows us to actually represent urban water system in an integrated model so that is very useful actually for especially water planning that is opposing towards integrated urban water modeling so that's all from my side if you have any questions please feel free to ask thank you mukta we do have a couple of questions. I will um, endeavour to ask them and I do have the ability to unmute people. So if you would like to um, directly ask a question, then if you click on the raise your hand, I should be able to find you and unmute you. Um, likewise, if I ask your question and you'd like to elaborate, then um, let's do put your hand up and I'll try and unmute you as well. So firstly, can Music X model loops? Loops, uh, in what sense? In what sense, okay. That question is from Oster. I'll see if I can unmute Oster. You should have the power now, Oster. Go for you. Would you like to elaborate on that question? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Mokta. Thanks for the presentation. Um, yeah, I've, I've been using music separately as its standalone um, version for a while. And I've noticed that 
um, it can't do closed loops. Say if you have a source node going to a to a wetland that then feeds to a tank, and then that tank then feeds back into the wetland for water supply topping up reasons. But music can't have that loop going on between the wetland and the tank um, to kind of just iterate, um, you know, water supply topping up the wetland as it goes to the tank, coming back in that way. Um, so I was just wondering whether this new feature in source um, can do can do closed loops within the model. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the question. It's still not uh, what we're expecting. There is not there. Uh, but in long run, we are actually trying to make it more flexible. We can actually add functions and so on in music, and then we believe that that will help in long run to apply those things as well. Okay, thank you. So within source, you will be able to do it with. Uh, but you'll be behind by one time step. So you'll have to decide where the lag is. So you can set it up to work, um, but the network would be separate, but you'd use a function to work it through. But you'd have to be, for instance, decide that you'd go all the way through to the tank, and then the next time step, the tank could top up the wetland. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, our next question is from Abel Imager. And Abel asks, can we use both data source and function editor at the same time? He, for example, he would like to model actual meter reading time series data as well as demand restrictions. So you can set it up to have, so for any single scenario, you need to decide if you're using a function or a data source, but you can have it so it can swap between the two with scenario input sets. And you can use time series data in your functions, um, but each individual scenario run, you have to choose whether you're using a function or a data source. Okay, yeah. thanks, thanks Mukta, thanks Jeff. Just a little bit of a clarification on, if I'm looking at imposing demand restrictions and I want to see under a restriction scenario, uh, how that might change uh, consumption. So, in that context, uh, can I can I superimpose my demand restriction regime on top of uh, historic um, meter readings and get some confidence as to my strategy will work or not? Um, you, you could. If you've got the data to model each of the restrictions, so for instance, if you implement a restriction um, that you think will reduce outdoor demand by 50%, then yes, you could certainly model um, with and without restrictions. Um, or you could have a over the brush top. So there is a tool within source um, to have essentially levels of restrictions. So you can go hop into level restrictions and then hop out of them at a different level. So, um, okay. so okay, it's thanks. actually, oh, sure. Is there a chance to ask a, another small question? I suppose oh, so. Okay. okay. Um, retail distributors, I think in uh, Southeast Queensland in particular, because we've got a separation between the bulk service provider and the retailers. The retailers tend to use a, a demand tracking tool called DMAT. Does um, the urban modeler uh, talk to uh, programs like DMAT, which are used for demand management and tracking and helping us to plan supply infrastructure and so on? Um, Shish, are you, are you able to take this question? Perhaps um, not. <laughs> um, sorry, a little bit. Yeah, I can. So I was thinking maybe we will have a QA session after my presentation. 
I have to I have to listen to this question. Today, can we can we finish the presentation fast? I have to say a few things and then probably we can answer question. Uh we can. I just thought perhaps whilst that was fresh in people's minds, they might like to ask their questions. But there are quite a few coming in, so we can um, move to your formal part of the presentation, Ashish, and then finish answering those questions. Sure. Hi, good morning all. Definitely we'll be going to give a session once we finish our like a course of presentation. Um, as you have heard, uh, Source 5 is our key, one of the key and major production release. The newly developed Urban Developer and Music X, along with Source 5, will allow the user to build a fully, sort of semi-fully integrated uh, mix, uh, SQL water quality and quantity model. The large scale water planning and catchment model now can be easily integrated with uh, a small scale water sensitive urban design model, as you have seen from Mukta's presentation. I would like to talk briefly about, uh, uh, about our licensing configuration for these products and plugin. Uh, we'll continue to offer our free public source version, which is limited to 20 node. Along with our full version of source, we will also keep offering the cardone versions of source, such as source casement and source uh, water planning. This new urban developer will be available only as a plugin, as you can appreciate. Music X will be available both as a plugin and also as a standalone product. As you can see in this slide, so Urban Developer plugin and Music X plugin, both will be available in full source, source casement, and also source um, water planning. The Urban Developer plugin will also be available with Music X standalone product. So now, I can talk briefly about our current about our current offering. The existing source user with up-to-date support and maintenance agreement will receive new urban developer free of cost. Secondly, anyone purchasing new source license before 30th of June will also receive urban developer free of cost. Now for the existing music 6.3 user, if you have your support and maintenance agreement up to date, you will receive music X standalone product free of cost. We understand many of our users are currently working from home because of the current COVID situation. As such, you may wish to update or upgrade your local soft lock or hard lock music licenses to network license. If you decide to do so for remote accessing, please contact us. We are offering 30% discount for all of SaaS upgrade, and the offer is valid until June 30th. And the, finally, we are offering a range of online training course, both for source and music. If you check any of those, those online courses, 50% of the training fee will be credited back to you for your any new product license process in future. The offer will be valid until June 2021. That is what I wanted to briefly say. I'll now hand over this thing, this presentation to Trudy again to run and continue the QA session. Thank you all. Thanks, Ashish. All right, well, I'll jump back into those questions then. Let me reorientate myself with the question panel. 
Okay. Uh, this question is from Aidan de Groot, and Aidan asks if you can bring results from an external music model into Source 5, or does it need to be a Music X model? So can it be a model from 6.3? Sure. Um, okay, I can answer this. So what we're offering now with the Music X, so if you have a Music 3 model, definitely you can bring it into Music X and simply click the run button, it will produce the similar type of result. Uh, Music 5 and also the source plugin got a capability to bring any, any flow data or any water quality time series data as a like an external scenario input. So the quick answer is yes, there, there is a way. But if it is a Music X model itself, that will be a step forward. Sure. Oh, hopefully that was clear enough. If you have an, another question, Aiden, just um, pop your hand back up and I'll try and get you the microphone. Uh, does eWater offer a service for building and calibrating models? Absolutely, Riz. Um, if you'd uh, like to speak to us about some of the services that we provide, then um, please get in touch, probably most easily through our sales team at sales at eWater.org.au. Uh, this next question is from Michael Barry, um, Michael, I will ask the question and then unmute you if you would like to ask any follow-up questions. Uh, along the lines of the closed loop question, does Source Urban Developer include the ability for demand feedback up the water supply route? Example, has water supply reservoir operation been influenced by demand restrictions? Reliability. Um, Jeff, yeah, Mukta, perhaps? Maybe Jeff uh, can answer it. Um, so, in terms of the uh, source model, do you mean, Michael? Yeah, I just, I just mean the ability to um, allow what's happening in demand locally to then influence strategies of uh, operating water reservoirs. Dynamically, so as part can, of the simulation. Uh, you can. So, and you can set it up so um, the water restrictions kick in and out based on different levels. And you can also have it so you can decide which water source you take water from based on how much water is supplied. So, you could model um, either pulling from groundwater or uh, your potable supply or you could model a separate storage as non-potable supply in a third pipe system, and you could use as much from the non-potable water to meet the demand, and then you just have to meet just the potable requirement from the main potable supply system. So you can do that dynamically. Hey, Jeff, can okay. I pitch in? Um, sure. Michael, a great question, and this is the whole purpose uh, of including this. So uh, remember, source is demand driven. Everything's a demand, environmental flows, uh, irrigators. And so what happens here is the demand from the urban uh, sector is modified by the alternative supplies and water saving devices. So um, if that demand is reduced, it flows straight back up to the reservoir and less water is requested uh, as part of the um, the ordering and uh, the ordering system. So it does exactly what you're talking about. Okay, thanks Robert, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, the next, next question is from Mohammed Essa. And Mohammed asks, does the basics rating for water usage get included? Yes, we do have uh, there like something already there based on some of the researches, uh, but it's still uh, I think like that overall uh, efficient appliances rating are changing. If you see the reports from various water utilities, and you may need to change based on those data. Mohammed, uh, I have unmuted you. If you have more to ask, thank you. 
<coughs> sorry um actually i'm just uh new to this um urban water design so i just i was just wondering if uh if the source 5 can provide uh basics rating for the water efficiency usage when we are designing the storm water and um yeah the storm water design for the houses i i can take that mukta yep. so the basics rating is basically looking at different metrics and telling you a number so that's not available in current music or music x or, or definitely not in source but the result you'll be getting from those product and plugin you can always post process to get you that individual basics number oh, okay all right thank you thank you very much Thank you. Um, I'll now unmute Abel and he had a couple of follow up questions to his earlier one. And maybe I'm not able to do that, Abel. Are you self muted? <laughs> not to worry. Um, we had a question by someone who's left but it might be something um, that more broadly people are asking um, i think we may have answered this one does music x have the link to six minute rainfall download and does music x have all the node types of the old music are all the defaults the same uh, so i i think that is correct but i'll let the experts answer that i Mutta, i can take yeah uh, yes, the answer is yes. So if you have uh, like, a, of course, the existing music, so you can you can import this thing in Music X. So in regards to like a climate data, we we offer the existing format, which is the bomb format is six minute. But as you probably know, there are new range of rainfall coming soon, which is one minute, and Music X also will be able to like a handle even that type of rainfall when it is available so yes the answer is yes very good okay well i think we've um no abel you're back online would you like to follow up with your question uh thanks for that trudy no it's just, uh, i think um it's been answered in the subsequent question with regard to restrictions as well uh, but i was just asking the question earlier about um, programs like DMAT, demand management and tracking tool, which are typically used by uh, the retail side of water services. And uh, they contain a lot of information that's uh, not quite operational, but it helps inform where we should be building our systems to supply future needs and also helping us with restriction regimes. So that's probably worth looking at to see a bit like the earlier question regarding basics, how do we plug into the existing suite of tools that are used by um, current retailers as well as bulk? I think you've done an amazing job with uh, meeting the bulk suppliers needs. It does a lot of good stuff, <laughs> but it's also on the retail side, it might be useful to just have a quick look at um, what sort of tools are being used and what sort of information is being collated. Thank you. Yeah, hi Abel, it's Robert. Um, so source can connect to external data sources like databases um, and you know systems in the cloud. Uh, because it's uh, .NET, we can talk to those sorts of systems. So um, basically um, those tools, we could connect to source with some sort of a function which brings the data together and creates the, um, the demand. Um, so you can do it. Um, it's it's more of an IT issue and how you want to transform that data into one of the inputs that goes into uh, into source. Um, and particularly if both are in the cloud, then um, that will work very well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we just had a question from Dale Brown. Um, I'll ask the question and then I'll flip through and find your name, Dale, so you can um, correct me if I've read it wrong or if you've got further questions. 
Um, have we confirmed that Music X can now produce, produce the same results as Music 6 under the same conditions? Is there documentation for this? And have any new features or capabilities been added other than those already discussed? I can I can take that, Mukta. Yeah. Uh, thanks, good question, Dal. So the answer, quick answer is yes, that is what we have been doing. And you are part of that, of course, over the last six months and so on. So we did our like automatic regression test to validate about 100 model and also we did uh, the thorough manual testing so the variation we're getting from music 6.3 to like a latest music uh, x most of the time variation is uh, less than one percent still there might have some of the function who is will produce a little bit higher variation but uh, yeah general statistics is, is less than one percent so that's your first question and second question we have not added any extra functionality in music x yes but definitely moving forward that's the goal and that was the whole reason why we uh, changed the platform from that back data code and tell p to c sharp dot net framework yeah great thank you ashish that's, that answers it that's great thanks good to hear that the testing's um coming back with good results too. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Um, I may have a question from Paul Dubowski, or it might be, looks melded in with Dale's. Let me see if I can separate it out. Is Music X based upon current science or is it still based on the same data sets as the previous versions? Some of this data is quite dated and limited, for example, gross pollutants. I will look to unmute you. Shish, would you like to answer that? Yes, I would like to answer that. That's a very, very good question. So science, yes. Uh, some of the science is very, very old, as you know, like for example, Manning's equation is is about 100 year old science but is still we believing on that because we don't have any other new knowledge now the science what we have in music that was done thorough thorough investigation field studies analytical studies and etc back in our chc days as you know so most of the science what we have in music is still that science but we are open to accept any new science if it is like a acceptable um, uh, science in the industry and we did for bioretention system probably you can remember like bioretention system science was a little bit backdated and that monash did a lot of investigation and research and so on so we updated the bioretention system based on that so pollutant generation yes we still depending on emc and dwc and which is still quite popular not only in music across the globe it is very quite popular it's not a maybe 100 percent um hundred percent accurate but that's the best we could uh, do from fluid and generation point of view um we are open if there is a new science coming uh, we are open um uh, we can modify these things as i as i say if there is a proper validation and calibration done and and finally what i want to say in here this is software so the data is important so modelers should take some responsibility to input the correct data like the default value how to use in music which is uh, most of the time very very good and we introduced different types of land use you probably know we have now 10 different types of land use in, in music and that is based on the new science done by team Fletcher and so on so if that science and that understanding and changing in in time we are open we can change it it is a software we can always change the, those sort of default values yeah, I guess um, from It'd be really great to um, have somebody at eWater actually looking into this issue rather than just assuming that um, you know all the users um, will be needing to go out and do their own uh, investigations and, and find the data. Certainly there is some responsibility there by the user, but yeah, it'd be great if somebody at eWater could actually have a look at the, the data that has become available over the past 10 years and um, decide you know kind of what's useful and what's not. Um, 
and, and not relying so much on industry to come to you with the data. Okay, so the answer for that is yes, definitely this is our our interest as well. This is our joint interest, I would say, with the industry. So, and that was one of the reasons why we had Music Link. So the data data will be a specific to locality, as you understand. So if you are in Queens, Queensland, you will be using one set of data. Melbourne probably will not be using that data. And that is the reason why to streamline that process so that everybody is using the correct data set that is acceptable for that local authorities or local region, we introduced Music Link. And we, we're closely working with the council uh, so that we, we can have a correct data set within the music. So definitely we are keen. Um, just from the software side, so one of the other things we get from using moving MusicX into the source platform is the ability to easily add in plugins or test algorithms through functions. So one of the good things about it being in the source platform is both eWater and others can write plugins to test out new algorithms. Or if it's a simple algorithm, you can do it just through the function manager. Thanks, Jeff. Um, we might move to our last question, and that is from Jara Moore. And um, Jara asks, over modeling could have many nodes with many parameters. Can I enter data in a spreadsheet and import to source to create the model rather than clicking in the interface? I'll let Jeff Davis answer that. Um, so there are plugins to bring in um, a CSV file of nodes and links and how they connect together. Um, I'll, I'd have to check if it would work for music nodes. I might have to update the plugin slightly, but um, you can edit parameters through the feature table um, within source. So once you've got your node and link network set up, all the parameters can be import and export through the feature table, which is a spreadsheet-like. Um, interface for the nodes and links. Right. Thank you. Well, that um, wraps up our questions. Um, and I think we've gone an hour. That's a nice length of time to be online. Um, just to, some of you did ask about recording. We have recorded the webinar and we will share it in the next couple of days. We'll also um, include a short survey. This is our first um, step into an online webinar in this new world. So we've got some questions about how it's worked and what we might be able to do differently. Um, and we've also had to move our training online. So we're also um, yeah in the thick of converting all of that and have successfully run some music courses. So. Um, if you want to brush up on your skills, then look into that. But thank you for your participation. I personally feel like it went well. And um, yeah, watch out for our, oh, we've had one more question. <laughs> it's okay, Dale, we'll get back to you and answer that question separately. Okay, well, thank you everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.